let us remember those who are gone. Let us call back their names, their looks, their ways and their works from the dust of forgetfulness. Let us lift them up again so that the children may have memory. And that this land know its own history. Just the eeriness and the beautifulness of it. It just grabs you, you know, when you look at it. And it was like that we were going through a fog. lived in that fog. Haunting is a major projection, video and photographic artwork created by Vic McEwen, artist in residence at the National Museum of Australia. The work features photographs of objects from the museum's collection and from other collections that record the profound social and ecological changes that came with agricultural development in southern Australia, changes that are continuing to unfold today. Vic wanted to make a work that connected in meaningful ways the Canberra region, where the National Museum is located, with Narandra, the productive farming district where he lives in the Riverina region of southern New South Wales. The Murrumbidgee River, one of Australia's great inland waterways, flows for roughly 1,500 kilometres from the Snowy Mountains past the western edge of Canberra, through the hills of Gundigai and Wagga Wagga, into the Narandra district and the western plains of the Riverina. Up here on the tablelands on the Murrumbidgee is a historic property called Lambrig, where in the 1890s farmer William Farrow used cross-pollinating methods to breed disease-resistant and drought-tolerant wheats that thrived on the dry Riverina plains and across much of southern Australia. When Vic saw this extraordinary display of prize-winning wheat samples collected by a Riverina farmer from the 1880s into the 1920s, he was struck by the contrast between their small size and their great power, by the power of the seeds to bring monumental transformations to inland Australia. The spread of modern agriculture generated new towns and communities, export commodities and prosperity. Farming infused our national identity. Today, we are all nourished, our bodies kept fed and warm by our agricultural heartlands. As well as opportunities and benefits, industrial agriculture brought loss and disruption, especially for Aboriginal people, the land, native species and our climate. Vic was fascinated by the idea of projecting into winter fog beside the Murrumbidgee, the river that linked the high country of Canberra to the slopes and plains of Narandra. Projecting images into fog, he felt, would allow for different interpretations of history to coexist and blend, offering fresh and necessary understandings of our contemporary world, a world that continues to be created by our past, by its ever unfolding consequences. We selected objects and photographs that together told a rich, dynamic, and at times difficult 
story of the changes that came with modern agriculture. Haunting has delivered a body of work that includes live performances on the Murrumbidgee River viewed by hundreds of people, video of the entire performances, a set of more abstract video works that show projections into fog, mist and smoke rolling through the open spaces above the river, and still images of the projections. So as we spent time out at Lambrig on our hunt for fog, trying to set up um, a situation where we could project into fog, we worked with a senior meteorologist from the Bureau of Meteorology who would um, try to predict when the conditions were right and we might potentially get fog. So on those days where we had our predictions, you know, it would be early mornings of George and I getting up at 3 a.m., heading out to the site in the hopes that an early morning fog would roll in. And we did that for several visits over, a, I'd say, a month and a half. Um, and each time we didn't get any fog at all. But then eventually we did get a couple of nights of really beautiful fog. And so all that experiments and all the worry about whether this was possible um, revealed some amazing results. What's happened now at this point of this process with this idea of projecting into shifting environmental conditions, and in this case fog, is that we've created a body of work that to me are like paintings, you know. So I feel like I'm starting to learn how can I paint with the projector into shifting environmental conditions? How can that be my materials to create paintings? In our experiments out there during winter, we're creating nearly this, a new form of expression with those elements, with those materials. And it's a collaboration between the technology of the projector, it's a collaboration between the objects from the National Museum and, and their story, their history, and that place itself. There's all those conditions that were in place on that day and that time of a combination of mist and fog and morning dew and all those things that were coming in at various times and how that was always shifting and always changing and that was an element beyond our control. That environment was giving us the images back. In this project, we've used technology to fold objects, their stories and meanings back into the places they come from. The particular active characteristics of the river of the same country that marked and gave shape to the objects and people that feature in haunting, brought the projected imagery to life in unexpected, sometimes mysterious ways. The Murrumbidgee River itself was a collaborator in the production of the artwork, in the generation of understanding. When George first took me out to Lambrig on the Murrumbidgee, I was really quite surprised because a part of me initially felt it was a different river. You know, it felt very different to how the Murrumbidgee feels in the Riverina. Um, and I realised over the time of sort of working there over winter that it seems much younger there. It seems like a teenager. Um, and the river around Narandra and Wagga and the areas that I know, the river seems very old. Um, it seems like there's a lot of stories in the river here. And it was interesting to reflect over that period of time and we were projecting these images that told of life on the river system and told of consequence on the river system. It's interesting to think about how, you know, those stories, by the time we get to Narandra and we've travelled from, you know, where the river to me still seems quite young and we travel through these places that these stories are related to, that we can see the, we can see the age and we can see the experience um, and the consequence of all these stories in the river in an area like Narandra because we sense age and we sense something um, something mighty here I think and that's that's fascinating that you know these the very thing that we're talking about how these stories are embedded in the landscape if you travel down the river and you see it in the place in Canberra and then down here in Narandra you see that change and to me that's the change that's happened from the story of these objects I saw the beauty go. The beauty that in a stream flowed through the breadth of the land. Like the fenceless foot of a dream. <laughs> 